I dealt with a lot of fear with that anxiety, with just never knowing what was going on, and I was afraid of everything. I missed out on a lot of mm. great things in my life, letting fear just dominate me. Mm. I, I would tell him, don't be afraid. So, you guys, wh when I think about this, mm -hmm. some people, the last time that they saw us all together was back in the 1980s, and we were Mike Ben and Carol Seaver up to, uh, up to some prank or something with Jason and Maggie, and now here we are, and we're all grown up. And now I'm speak I'm, for I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm married, 27 years, and I have six kids. How did that happen? Right. And you, you're, you're married. You're, yeah, we, we'll be married 24 years um, this 24 month. Years. Yeah, 24 years, and we have four boys. Four boys. It's amazing. Joni and I have been together. It'll be 15 years in February. So. Yeah, and we've been together. Robbie and I've been together 29. Right. Amazing. I I can't believe how fast the time goes by. I've talked to my sister Candace about this, and you know, today kids have a sense of, uh, of, of extreme pressure when it comes to being teenagers because of social media. You've got pictures and cameras in your face yes. all the time, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're constantly on display with this perfect life that you want to show to everybody else. But in our day, we had a version of that in the fact that we were just in the public eye, mm -hmm. and there were paparazzi cameras on us. It wasn't Instagram, but it increased a sense of, having to be all that and all, you know, be great, look great, always sound great, have the right things to say, always be funny, and it put the pressure on us, particularly that I think a lot of people don't, don't really understand. Oh, I mean, I, I absolutely, as we all know, I felt pressure for sure. Mm -hmm. And I do wonder what it would have been like for us if we had been on TV in this day and age with like even more pressure, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. you know, more, access to us and stuff. I felt like we kind of could go and hide away a little bit. Like yeah. when we left the set, yeah. we go home and we could kind of just like let our guard down, especially because none of us lived like, you know, we lived a little further away from the studios and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. like that. But there was pressure, absolutely. And we were going through our adolescence just like everybody else, but we were supposed to go through them kind of perfectly. On display. That's right. Because yeah. we were the Seavers. All of our problems got resolved in yeah. 30 minutes. For me, being a girl on TV yeah. was a lot of pressure. And going through, you know, I was 16 when I got growing pains. And by the time, probably I was like a year later, I think I had like gained a little bit of weight. And there was just a lot of pressure to be, look a certain way, be a certain way. And, you know, eventually led to my eating disorder. But for me, it caused a lot of insecurity. And then they would bring in best of Hollywood, you know, the most beautiful, the, you know, and you're just sitting there and you're like, oh my God, they're just like one's prettier after another that would come through the, the growing pain set. And so as, you know, when you're 16, there, it breeds a little insecurity. So I remember just feeling a sense of who, who can I really trust? Here I'm this guy on TV and everybody thinks they know you, yep. but they don't know you. Well, even by sixth grade, I mean, I'm sixth grade, what, that's 12 years old? I had already started kind of testing friends occasionally by telling them the show had gotten canceled and seeing um, their response. Did they really? keep talking to me? And that's at 12, I was already doing that to kind of well, judge just where to I stood. Out who your real with, friends are. Yeah. Uh, when, so. I, when I started dating Robbie, I remember, because my dad's an agent also, it's like, um, all like, you know, any guy that you, you date is like, oh, are they an actor? Do they want to be an actor? Yeah, right, <laughs> like, flaky, right, this isn't they need to which was awesome. Yeah. So, but it, like all of that kind of stuff, I always like questioned anyone's motivation. Right. Do for they want to know you for who you for are who or for what you can bring to them? Yes. Yep. Right. So what did what did what have you learned and what advice would you give to young girls today who are who are wrestling with the same stuff? It's hard to live in this society and mm -hmm. not have insecurities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that you have to just keep them in check. The way that that society is built, you know, it feeds into our insecurities. But I don't let them get the better of me just because I went down such a slippery road. My eating disorder like just stopped everything that I loved in my life. So I had to like choose, like like, do I want all these things I love in my life or do I want this eating disorder that's really no longer fulfilling any kind of purpose for me. Mm. All it's doing is keeping me isolated. And what I realized was at my lowest weight, it didn't make me any happier than I was when I was, you know, Carol Seaver and, you know, I was able to, to sort of realize there's a balance. Yeah. And, you know, 
nobody's going to really talk too much about, you know, how much you weighed when you died. It's going to be the quality of life that you live. It just sounds so funny even when you say that. Like, of course nobody's going to talk about of that. Course. Yet it's so important to us, especially when we're teenagers. Jeremy, talk for a minute yes. about the specific pressures you were feeling and the challenges that you had to work through during the show. The insecurities were really big for me. And um, having to be on all the time. That's what I called it, was always having to be on. Yeah. You know, always having to act more adult, carry myself more professionally, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, most of my being on TV, you know, was 12 and under, 13 and under. Mm -hmm. You guys were more teen, you had a little more input in what you were doing. I had a step idiot who, you know, basically tried to control everything, who had... Yeah, you had a rough experience. I mean, I had, I had some issues I, I was from, dealing with. From, you know, I think we were lucky that the, the stability with our families Helped really were lot. helpful. Yeah. He and you had a little was bit more instability. A little more, uh, he was more conducive to the insecurity. He added a lot right. to that as well. So I, you know, I ended up dealing with it with alcohol. I mean, I did what a lot of people do. Yeah. It's, I, I ran to an addiction. I just wanted to blot it out. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, I, you know, because of a lot of the stuff on the show, my stepfather, all that, I'm, I developed a really strong social anxiety disorder um, to the point where I was just absolutely crippled trying to go out of the house a lot of times. And the way I dealt with that was alcohol. Oh, I didn't mm. know you couldn't go out of the house. It's, so it, there was a period there. Wow. And you know what I love is that you're at the point now, and, and you are at the point now, publicly, where you guys are helping others through the things that you've gone through to be able that's, to bring comfort well, and inspiration and help that to people who are dealing with the same thoughts. Joni and I have always, uh, you know, Joni's had a hard life as well, and her and I both find a lot of purpose in taking the really screwed up things that we've gone through yep. and utilizing them to help others. Yep. And both her and I really feel that that is why we go through those things is so that we can learn how great is that be able because to Jeremy, I could help never someone else you can speak to those people from experience with authority in a way that I never could or Tracy never could because we haven't been through it like and it's so great you have that perspective I love it it makes an amazing difference it really does and I'm sure Trace knows this in talking well, to for, people for, who for me, have, eating, have dealt with eating disorders as well mine was because it happened so publicly I was on the show yeah. when I got sick and I had to leave the show and so for me having been so professional and been ingrained in my brain since I was a child like you don't miss a line you don't miss you you'd be the first to show up last to leave you do whatever I just I was always trying to please and so for me to have to leave the show and because yeah. I was sick was just the worst and then it became public and I remember there was a moment where People Magazine called and they're like we want to do an article on her and I'm like I it was the week I left the show and I was still trying to find like a doctor to go to I'm like I I can't do an interview I'm just trying to freaking save my life right here I can't speak to anything well, I don't that, know that's part of the problem is that everybody is yeah. like yeah mm -hmm. but then what happened was that they said don't worry about it we're going we're still going to do the article we'll go ahead on the article without her we'll just interview her other people about her and I had a moment and I think it was a part of my healing was the start of it at least was no 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 I, I want my voice to be heard I don't want anyone speaking for me. Right. I'll tell my story. And so I did the article and it ended up being the cover of People Magazine. Mm. And it was the beginning of me kind of being a spokesperson for you know eating disorders, anorexia, um, and which I, would, I never would have thought or that I would go down that road. No, but it really, not. I'm so, I, mean, I feel so happy that I, that, I, that I did, you know, because it was such a negative experience in my life, but to turn it around and be able to help people, I mean, well, I'll tell save you when lives. I, when I, I mean, mm -hmm. when I first mm -hmm. got sober, um, I was ashamed, like a lot of people are when they're dealing with addiction. I really was. And when I started trying to get sober, I didn't want anybody to know. I mean, I was very, very secretive about it. I, I was just, I used different names when I went to meetings or did different things like that. And um, I actually got sold out to the National Enquirer by my first uh, sponsor. Oh, fun. And um, that sent me on another bender for quite a while because I just didn't trust anybody in right, recovery. Right, just I betrayed again. Just completely betrayed again. Um, National Enquirer never ran with it, thankfully. Um, but they called and let me know that they wanted to do a story on my alcoholism and it just absolutely shattered me for wow. a while. 
it took a while till I was mm. actually ready to get sober a few years later when I realized that, you know, I wanted to talk about it. I yeah. wanted to shout it from the mountaintop if I yeah. could help just one person. You That's know? right. And I've actually had that experience multiple times now. Um, when I got to go do an episode of Dr. Oz, just going to sit and talk about my recovery, yep. Yep. he brought on a girl who I'm now friends with. Joni's really good friends with her from Philadelphia who saw my story and I actually inspired her to go to rehab and get sober. And she's now running a rehab center. She's got oh. three kids. She's been sober for four years. How she's, great is that? And I got to be a part of that. And that's, that's I had beautiful. numerous stories like that that I've been blessed to be a part of. And just being able to share that created that ripple. So Tracy, if you could go back in time and you could speak to the 16-year-old Tracy when you were in the middle of growing pains, what advice would you give her? Don't be so hard on yourself. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. And don't, don't like, love yourself a little bit more. Appreciate that, like, you're good enough. And the funny thing is, I think, you know, and I, because one of the things I thought about is would I tell 16-year-old Tracy to appreciate this moment because it's so incredible? But I think I always appreciated where we were mm -hmm. when we did Growing Pains. Mm. Even back then, I had an understanding of, like, this is special and this is cool, what yeah. we're doing. Mm -hmm. I dealt with a lot of fear with that anxiety, with just never knowing what was going on, and I was afraid of everything. I missed out on a lot of mm. great things in my life, letting fear just dominate me. Mm. I, I would tell him, don't be afraid. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the TVN YouTube channel. We hope this video blessed you. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and then tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And please share the video with a friend who needs to hear it. Thanks and God bless you.